Hello everybody, this is uh, Dr. Kevin Novak again. What I'm going to talk about in this one is some research that I did a long time ago with 30 aquariums. And the aquariums were to just see uh, different ways of setting them up, but uh, to also find out about denitrification. Okay, and one thing uh, one of the researchers found out that uh, uh, reinforcing the hypothesis that uh, nitrification uh, is external to the roots. Okay, denitrification, known as denitrification, external to the roots of the plants. And the plants themselves aren't really all that responsible for reducing nitrates as a lot of us think that bacteria basically reduce nitrates more so than plants because plants as we all know want a food source of ammonia and there's only a few exceptions to that rule that plants that look uh, for nitrogen but most plants are looking for ammonia so therefore um, denitrification has to take place in the fish tanks itself and in the substrate is the best place to do it because most of us have substrates instead of uh, uh, you know where you're going to have a, a wear that's going down to a sump so that's the way we had to look at it now each one was uh, each tank all 30 tanks were meticulously maintained okay Optimum oxygen levels throughout the testing were held. They were held at a constant. The pH was controlled. A diet of ammonia and carbon. And the carbon was provided, of course, by the uh, calcium carbonate chips that we added to each aquarium. These were sterile calcium carbonate chips. So that's how they got their carbon. And this was mixed in with the substrate. And uh, all the tanks were maintained at 27 degrees centigrade. And uh, all the bacteria had to do was attach to the surfaces and grow and keep dividing their cells and keep, man uh, and keep going. And, and the plants that we put in, we wanted to see how they were going to do. And uh, so the tests were done. All parameters were determined. All parameters of these tanks were determined by using a spectral photometric analyst using the Hatch DR2000. Okay, uh, all ammonia measurements conducted using the Nestler method. Nitrate measurements were used by the ferrous sulfate method. That's how we measured them. And nitrates using the cadmium reduction method. Okay. That's how we measured everything. We also measured for bacteria count, different kind of bacteria that are going to grow in the substrate, oxygen levels in the substrate as well as internally and externally of the substrate. Okay, so the first 10 tanks with the substrate at the bottom. What we found out is over time, the oxygen levels did drop down to zero and right where the glass was basically where the silica of the glass is uh, a lot of anaerobic bacteria began to grow and these created black spots throughout now remember the substrate is 89 millimeters thick on all the tanks and that's pretty thick that's over three inches three and a half inches thick so you have a pretty thick substrate but we wanted that thickness so the roots could grow and go down in the substrate you know uh, it may have changed if we would have used one inch substrate but we didn't we wanted to use a substrate deep enough for roots to grow because of some of the plants we were growing were very uh, invasive you know like uh, Amazon swords they're very big they have very good root system your crypts very big root systems and that's what we were had in the tank but we notice even with these invasive plants with the substrate at the bottom uh, it still had blackening of the substrate and we tested it and 
Of course, what we tested was ammonia was being produced at the very bottom of the substrate and anaerobic bacteria was now making more ammonia. And when we pulled those plants out after 18 months, yes, there were white root hairs and stuff like that, but we also saw blackening of the roots also, okay? That's from the hydrogen sulfite and stuff actually eating away at the roots. And the oxygen levels actually dropped down to complete zero at the bottom. The next 10 tanks had the heating cables. Well, the plants grew far better with the heating cables, okay? And of course that would make sense, right? We all understand that plants love to have their roots warm. And we can see that like in springtime with grass. You know, the ground starts warming up, the grass is growing like a banshee. It's cooler, but the ground's warmer. Okay, we all know about heating up the roots. But that seemed to do very well. The oxygen levels were very good. The problem is, once summertime came, the heating cable stopped because the lighting system provided more than enough adequate heat to keep the tanks warm in the summertime. And then those tanks turned into the tanks that had the substrate directly on the bottom. And they all produced the same problems as the first 10 tanks once the heating cables were off because the thermal dynamics of the heating cables stopped where cold and heat are being exchanged and oxygen coming into the substrate. And we found out that the fusion of ions was a lot slower and same problems that exist in the first 10 tanks now existed in these tanks and I was quite surprised but once the heating cables came ba back on again in winter time little by little you could see the blackening of the soil shrink uh-huh it began to shrink well that would make sense the heating cables now are bringing oxygen down once oxygen hits anaerobic bacteria kills it and but once the heating cable stopped again Guess what? The blackening of the soil came back. Okay, now in the 10 tanks that had the plenum, well, we had no blackening of the soil. In fact, there were no, in all 10 tanks, there were no anaerobic pockets like we found in the other two tanks at all. No anaerobic pockets. We found very, very low oxygen levels. Okay, very low. But what happened then as a new kind of bacteria grew called anaerobic heterotrophic vacuitata bacteria. This is a demorphic bacteria. And it starts growing profusely because it likes those oxygen conditions of 0.5 parts per million to 2 parts per million. And it starts growing around the, the root hairs of the plants and everything else and all the way down to the bottom of the substrate. Because don't forget that the plenum is about an inch high, like I showed you my thing, and it allows the chemical and biological pathways and meteors to stay open. And therefore, oxygen comes in and out. Though it goes low, it never quite goes to zero like it did in the other two tanks. And what we found out is the it had a higher bacteria count. Yes, it had a higher, more assortment of microaerophile bacteria and that substrate than the other two substrates. Uh, in, in, in simple terms, let me put it this way. You played with magnets when you were a kid, right? You know you had weak magnets and you had very strong magnets and the strong magnets, you know, you can put them underneath the table and you can move them. The weak magnets wouldn't do it. That's exactly what you're doing with your substrate. It doesn't mean it's not going to work. What it means is you just made yourself a very weak magnet by putting your substrate at the bottom. You make a stronger magnet by making a plenum. You will have more bacteria. You'll have a ha higher bacteria count. And anaerobic bacteria makes more ammonia. Okay, that ammonia feeds plants. That's what plants are looking for. Remember I told you that. But in the tanks that had the plenum, there was no ammonia being produced. Hmm because of the factutata bacteria. And that bacteria, when the nitrosomatis would break down nitrites 
and into nitrates, they could take that nitrates and steal the oxygen from it. They also did another thing we found out. They went and got phosphates, well that's from your food, and they went and got phosphates and stole the oxygen from phosphates. And the phosphate levels were lower with the plenum than they were in the other two tanks, which meant we didn't have as many problems with the algae, or our, our cyanobacteria and algae, because in order for cyanobacteria to grow, which a lot of people don't know, you could have nitrogen, but nitrogen alone may not cause a cyanobacteria problem or algae problems. What it is is the phosphates, and phosphates can be very, very low and all of a sudden trigger off your cyanobacteria and your algae. And then your tank gets all messed up and you say, oh, I can't figure out what happened. My, my plants are growing so good. Well, if you have a little bit of nitrates and then you add just a dab of uh, the phosphates, that's it. You now have made the perfect scenario, or if you want to call it the perfect storm for uh, your aquarium to go and with algae and cyanobacteria, which has been shown on YouTube uh, through several videos how people's tanks wind up getting all kinds of hair algae in them and stuff like that. And uh, like Jason, Jason's Aquarium, I think I mentioned him, he does videos where he started a brand new tank. His plants were growing like banshees, really. His plants are growing great, but he's got cyanobacteria all over everything. And that's the reason why he put his substrate at the bottom, okay, and he wasn't growing the right bacteria. The thing we found out, though, with the plenum is, yeah, the factutative bacteria takes, takes a while to grow. It's not going to grow overnight. It takes at least 60, let's give it 60 days, at least 60 days. So your aquarium is going to take a little longer to break in, but it will break in with that bacteria. And then everything clicks in, just like you see with my aquarium here. It did okay when it was brand new, and then now it's really taken off. Now things are just really, really taken off and growing, but still no algae and stuff. So I'm not saying that if you take your substrate and you throw it directly on the bottom aquarium that you may not be successful. I never said that. What I'm saying is you will have a better system with more bacteria and better bacteria if you can get the substrate off the very bottom of your aquarium. Okay, and you, the likelihood of having problems is lessened. Though there's always somebody who's going to say, well, my gravel's sitting at the bottom and I'm successful. Yeah, but I'm just saying the likelihood of having problems is now lessened. It's it's almost like insurance, you know. It doesn't guarantee you're not going to have an accident, but if you do have an accident, you got that insurance to back you up. And that's what this is. That's when we did the research. That's exactly what we came up with. So if anyone wants to counterdict or, deb or debate, I got a few articles I list so you can click on. You can read all about some of the experiments we did. We also tested out uh, uh, these bacteria cultures that you put in your ponds and aquariums. We tested them out, see how well they worked. Uh, and I tell about that. So until next time, this is Dr. Novak. Happy tanking.